Hello, I'm Jean-Claude Servenis. I'm the French futurist. Uh, welcome uh, in my podcast. Uh, today, I'm welcoming uh, Igor Alchev, who will speak about cyber security. Igor, very nice to meet you. I'm, I'm so pleased to have you here. Uh, hey, fine. It's so nice to see you in Kiev right now in these days. That's uh, that's important for me to be here in Kiev and to meet and to interview some hero like you. For, so let's begin by the beginning. Who are you? Okay, so first of all, uh, I'm Ukrainian and I really appreciate the guys like you now in Kyiv, in Ukraine. You support us. It's very important for us and we really feel the support. So I am CEO of Cyber Unit Technologies. I'm, uh, we provide services in cybersecurity. We have strong team of experts, of experts in cybersecurity. And before the 24th of uh, February, we provided services for government, for private sector, for in Ukraine and uh, other countries in South Korea, in Japan, mm -hmm. in Singapore. And starting from 2022, the 24th of February, I also become a coordinator of cyber volunteers. My country needs my help. The food, so and we decided. So I asked actually people, ask of, uh, my team and ask of all community, if you cannot, uh, like, if you don't know how to shoot with a gun, you should take your laptop and help uh, your country in cyberspace. So, so actually what we are doing now, already one year, so we have some progress in this area. Our goal is to support our government, to support our, uh, our country and provide as much services as we can in order to stop the enemy and to win the war. So uh, it's very interesting because um, uh, we are uh, unfortunately a lot of time in shelter and I have a lot of my guys, uh, myself when I'm in shelter, I see uh, people with a laptop, with, yeah. with Wi-Fi uh, and these guys are keeping following, you know, we are under shelling and uh, they keeping following. So uh, is it a spirit for you inside this country for that? Um, yes, I think it's the spirit of all Ukrainians, actually, because I saw these people in shelter as well. And I started my fight from the shelter in the first day of the war, like on this uh, uh, full-scale invasion. I remember how it was like explosion outside oh, yeah. and I was sitting like, okay, what I can do? So guys, let's, let's uh, uh, work together. So I made a declaration, collect 1000 people. We started like work. So everybody like, I, I, I'd be surprised. I, I was surprised to be honest, because for me it was. I saw that, okay, a couple of dozens of people might apply to help me, like, to, to fight. But it was hundreds, 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 thousands of people. It's like, everybody, I want to help, I want to help. Because, you know, we, we see the enemy outside. Our president asked us to make a full fight, like, to kill enemy. So we cannot, like, if this IT guys, they cannot kill the enemy, but they can stop them, they make some, uh, they collect some analytical, uh, information in uh, provide this analytic information to our Ministry of Defense, National Security Defense Council, and uh, like all government institutions, Ministry of Digitalization. So our goal is to provide all information, collect all people uh, together, and uh, coordinate actually all activities in order to be uh, more more effective. In the, in the spirit of people, uh, a fight on a normal war zone uh, is something they can imagine by moving, by what they see or read or write a lot. But uh, for them, I think it's complicated to, to understand what is a cyber war some, uh, yeah. somehow. Yeah. How do you protect the country? How do you do that on the web? Yeah, now it's a reality that cyber war is a part of the real war. Um, um, as we saw like from, uh, uh, from now from different analytical uh, like information and analytical papers that Russians started invasion with uh, kinetic movement, let's say with tanks, with soldiers, and at the same time they did a, a cyberspace uh, invasion. So they they did invade earlier. They, they made it like some data leakages and so on. Mm -hmm. They can keep information. Uh, and uh, this day, 24th of February, they actually started like to crush everything in cyberspace. They tried to crush everything in cyberspace. So that like cyberspace is a part of all war. For sure. So p people, we fight on the, in the air, on the sea, on the ground, and in cyberspace. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you do you consider that this war is for the cyberspace or the side of the world, the cyberspace, the first time we have this side of operation? Yeah, I think it's the first actually first ever cyber war probably in the world, and. Uh, 
uh, like I think like a lot of like in future a lot of people will be investigating how it happened actually what they did how we like act so what how actually important to keep all the uh, cyber society to put together like cyber people together with the government people they should be together so and all the cyber volunteers they should be like the part of this war for sure because it's not possible to protect let's say 1000 object of critical infrastructure just with like with 100 uh, government representatives so all people should be connected and if you have skills in cyber security it means you also have some kind of weapon and you can use this weapon like to protect your country in cyberspace. Do you see, uh, you being an expert with, uh, with also a lot of governments before the war, uh, how do you analyze uh, the capacity of governments uh, to be prepared? You know, uh, we were having COVID uh, and the big crisis of COVID, we thought we were prepared before and we, we saw that it was a mess. Do you see that now governments in Europe are, for example, prepared uh, for, for this type of level of war? You know, you, know it's, you cannot be prepared for 100% for sure. And uh, Ukraine made a, like, huge digital steps, let's say, in the like, development of the country. So, and if you become more digital, it, became, like, it means that hackers will try to hack you more and more. And uh, so it's, we need to understand that cybersecurity is an ongoing process. You cannot be like, secure at once and then just relax. It, more digital you become, more hackers will try to hack you. That means more attention you need to pay to the cybersecurity of your whole processes and more education you need to bring to your team. And so cybersecurity, it's an ongoing process. Uh, I'm always saying that there is balance in the universe for everything, you know, between the good yeah. and the bad, you know, the light and the shadow. Uh, what is for you the balance uh, in digital between what is bringing digital to a society like, like Ukraine and what the digital is taking also on the shadow part, making it uh, weaker potentially or so on. Do you see that? Do you feel that? Well, digitalization and so this uh, all uh, progress is a part of our life. We cannot stop this. Of course. So it's not possible just to stop the progress and say, okay, so scientists, please don't do the science. Like IT guys, stop doing everything. We, we just cannot do it. So we need to like um, uh, approve it, and we, we need to we need to see like wait, and we to like expect more and more interesting life ahead. But at the same time, so this life become more dangerous, um, and uh, cybersecurity will become definitely like wider and wider part of uh, all the digitalization, because more digital uh, di digitalization we like allowed to go to our life uh, more uh, uh, we should be more like uh, like pay, pay more attention to this because like if, if you put some chip in our yeah. brain like cool. hackers will try to hack this cool. chip let's say and yeah so it's important um let's speak about the country um one uh, you know you know my love for Ukraine. Yeah. so i'm arriving in ukraine i arrived in ukraine to live fully during the war and, and I'm very impressed by uh, the level of digitalization. You can almost do everything now in digital uh, concerning the public service. Uh, you go in, in a, uh, you go in the hospital, everything is digital between, between the doctors and so on. Uh, do you consider today that the digitalization, the transformation of the country yeah. is in process? Uh, and you still have a lot of work, like for example, Estonia is fully digital. How do you see this progress? Yeah, so digital help us. Uh, it's important for our country because it helps us to uh, to fight against corruption and bureaucracy. Like because previously, if I need some paper from gov from government, I need to go and wait and stay some I don't know a huge queue, and then uh, I, they ask me to bring some one more paper, and so a lot of bureaucracy, and they. In, like somebody can ask me like to give some money because like uh, if you need this paper now it's everything in the form so it's so like it, it's so easy even so a lot of processes even more in, like easier than if in Europe or in USA so it's it's a great opportunity for us so and in this digital fight in, in, like we Ukraine is like now is one of the leaders in the world yeah. and for us it's very important to keep this digital transformation 
in the correct way. So because like if it will be some data leakages, let's say in the future, uh, or uh, people will stop to trust, uh, will stop trusting um, uh, this digital transformation. It means that we need to, it's like a, you're driving the car, right? If you go faster, you need to have your seat belt <laughs> because it's your health, it's your security. The same is with digitalization. If you have more digitalization in your country, pay more attention to security. So security and cybersecurity market now growing so fast, not only in Ukraine and all over the world. And uh, yeah, so it's a lot of opportunities for new in commerce, like more than 100,000 uh, open uh, vacancies, like for the, so this market needs new people actually. And I hope after this podcast, some people will decide we to go, will go. To go yeah. they will be, oh, I'm in love in cybersecurity. I would like to go and start my career there. So it's, it's a lot of, about education because people need to have a skill first uh, to understand the code and to understand the stupidity in between. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's also a lot of, cu of question of education, how to educate people uh, to have a good behavior in cybersecurity. So education and cyber hygiene, it's uh, probably the most important part of cybersecurity because uh, uh, people is the weakest uh, actually uh, part of uh, any company, of any government. And almost 90% of all uh, hacks and all data leakages are because of the human factor. And you can like invest like millions and millions in some uh, infrastructure system if you don't if you don't educate your employees if you don't educate your citizens it means hackers will hack the brain of this person and give this all information so it's important to create this let's say uh, people firewall like for, for educate people explain it all the time so how important is it uh, to be educated you need it just we, we don't have any options actually. Everyone who uses phones, laptops have to like um, go uh, to cyber hygiene processes. I know the term of cyber hygiene. So uh, we 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 have this term for for the hand, for the body. What will be the Alex, the the five main rules in cyber hygiene for you? So yeah, some main rules. So first of all, first of all, if you uh, if you want to be like in cyber hygiene, like a person of cyber hygiene, you have to like to be ready to spend at least one hour per month to read something about cybersecurity, to be aware about cybersecurity because awareness is a, like most important uh, part. If you go to, I don't know, to ha haircut uh, once per month for one hour, the same time you, like at least the same time you need to spend to all um, uh, cyber hygiene processes. Like it's a, like my advice is very simple. Like to not to to to, to always to to think of what you're doing. Not to click some links. Change the passwords every like three or six months. Is not to have the same passwords for all accounts. Used to factor authentication. So it's a very simple advices. People can read actually these advices a lot. And uh, uh, we are doing for example a lot of webinars. And my friends know that uh, like I, I provide the services. But if something happened for them, they called me like Saturday evening. So <laughs> please, Igor, help us. Somebody trying to like uh, hack our Instagram account of our corporation. It's so important for us. Uh, okay, it's so important. Why you didn't even once? <laughs> it's your, my webinar. I said like, okay, please, guys, don't do this. Don't do this. Like, it's so simple. But okay, you can call me at Saturday night and ask me what to do. Yeah, we are always happy to help. Um, so it's actually uh, all cybersecurity experts. We have the same skills. Like so, we actually hackers. So we have skill. We know how to hack. You but, know. Yeah, but we provide the service. Cool. But we make official money on it. So because we know how to hack, so that means that we know how to protect. And it means that uh, like we're doing some good works, so good energy. Provide. Well, you die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. So speaking about Jedi, that, that's interesting because I, I had before many startups and I was developing startups, uh, mostly in AI and robotics. Mm -hmm. and, and to try to see how much my team was, uh, was well aware about cybersecurity, mm -hmm. I was using Jedi like you for, <laughs> to add my own system and to, you know, to test the level of security on the system. And, and you see that most of the time that the people who are doing cybersecurity that are making the most mistakes by themselves. Yes. Um, 
in 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 our situation here now in in Warzone, for example, Mish uh, leading a huge foundation problematic in between uh, technology and so on. Would you have some advice, some things to to follow? I will give you an example. I'm speaking about uh, uh, drones. Uh, I'm, I'm using drones to to assess where to be mined. Mm -hmm. I discovered yesterday, speaking with uh, with my team, that my drones can be hacked by uh, by uh, on air, so I can lose my drones on air. Yeah. So it's uh, in fact uh, every time you are doing something, you have more problematic to handle. Of course. What what will you, would be your advice to have in in house someone doing that? Uh, to have to use experts uh, like you outside to be able to to create a perimeter of security outside. What is the best strategy? It depends uh, uh, on the person, probably on the personality. Some people, is, for someone, is like uh, we have customers. It's uh, famous people, so they're political, for example, or they even big businessmen. They hire us to envy protect their perimeter. Let's say their all accounts, uh, business accounts, personal accounts, and so on. But at the same time, we like recommend to do it by yourself. So it's uh, better to be involved in all these processes. Of course, if you can, if you like, ready to pay some attention to to spend some time, at least one two hours per month for all your like accounts to verify everything is correct and so on. And sometimes you can like ask advices of cyber security experts. But it's better to keep everything by your own. But if if you don't have time, if you don't have, if you don't want to do it, because it's like some people they have like more than one hundred accounts, like and then they used to like but, one password for all accounts. It's so crazy, like so. It's better to probably to hire some specialists that they will um, sort it out, like set up everything correct, and then you just need to keep it uh, in correct way. Do you see an evolution in your in your business? Um, we are speaking about. Uh, a quantum, uh, quantum uh, in electronic and quantum uh, computing uh, really change a lot your way of doing oh, yeah. security. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you see what I mean. Uh, uh, in many many business, you see an evolution of technology. Do you see yourself an evolution of technology? Definitely. So cyber security, like it, already a part of cyber security. It's uh, artificial intelligence because, like, if previously hackers were like be able to just to hack something simple or ju just need to bring some... Oh, oh, okay, another example. Quantum supercomputers, they will they will probably like be able to open any account in yeah. like... A uh, couple of seconds. Yeah, so we'll need to... So in, it will be some period of time when like people need to adapt all these like uh, new rules, let's say. And uh, for now, for example, artificial intelligence, it can write the code better than uh, IT uh, like programmer. Mm -hmm. So it won't change in all the time. So it's, uh, we just need to be prepared for this and uh, adapt all this. Uh, new but it's stuff. a bit of science fiction between you and me because I, I'm, I'm coding uh, since long, but I am far to be early or early, but it's a bit like uh, I'm adding this technology, I'm putting this technology in front of uh, uh, AI uh, is fighting AI. The quantum is fighting quantum. How to be able uh, in in the situation to to always be adapted? You know that's uh, it's it's a question of 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 guns. It's the same. You have a nuclear weapon. You can't uh, fight with uh, with our. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I studied physics before cybersecurity, and my professor told me so. The biggest like uh, Nobel prizes and so on. They they are not. They actually. Physics or uh, chemistry guys, they, they find some solution between different topics. Not exactly on one topic or another. Exactly. Something between is always all very interesting. So it's how science works and the same actually how if we take cybersecurity and artificial intelligence and we combine all the, to these topics, something very interesting will appear like on the middle. So I'm pretty sure about it. Let's search the topic if you don't mind. Uh, uh, let's speak about uh, Kiev in Ukraine. Where are you from in Ukraine? Uh, I was born in Kiev. In Kiev. Yeah. Oh, you are a child from Kiev. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, how is your life in Kiev now? Because for people, they are thinking that we are under shedding, having drones for, for us. Uh, I try all the time to give example about the life of, of, of Kiev. Uh, how is your life now? Well, it's uh, a lot of traffic again. <laughs> Yeah, but previously, like in the first months of invasion uh, of the world, so I, I could uh, like uh, get from one part of the city to another one for 20, 
to 15 minutes probably. Now it's again one hour. So people come back to Kyiv. It means people come back. So for me, Kyiv is my like favorite city. Of course, I was born here. My childhood, the childhood was here. And for me, it's uh, I'm in love here. I lived like in Germany five years and I always wanted to come back to Kyiv. Here is my roots and I feel everything here, how it works. Now it's a bit like uh, Kyiv change it a little bit now. P people really, um, like work came to us, yep. you know, like, and uh, people, some people are scary, some people are in uh, depression, some people uh, like, but all, we, we all like try to keep uh, the line, you know, like all together, we support each other. Now you can find any type of like support or help just, I don't know, writing in Facebook, so I need something like people help. Immediately. Like, yeah, yeah, because we know that all of us we need to like to go through uh, until the end otherwise it, like we don't have any other choice right so we will become stronger and stronger until we win do you feel that the world changes society Sorry. do you feel that the war is changing the society as uh, we know the way ukrainian are accelerating to write the story exactly yeah so i be honest i don't i cannot imagine what can like actually uh, hit us uh, like what what can like destroy us because like what can regular ukrainian uh, like it's he's he or she stays in kiev and she's like doing something to win the war and i cannot imagine what actually can destroy this person because like bombs i don't know uh, some terroristic organizations can be on the city like in, uh, somewhere in kiev or some other city uh, by the way, in the first days of the war, we like we helped to we created a bot that helped to collect uh, people who uh, like uh, get in Russian money, you know, Russian rubles, and they tried to get it from ATM. And uh, uh, well, one of my friend called me he, from the western part of Ukraine. He said, "Who oh, said? Thanks God, we don't have this uh, like busters in uh, in the western part of Ukraine." I, I look at my bot, say, "Okay, like just last five hours." More than 20 people tried to take from the ATM and, and this Russian rubles. So, yeah, all these people, they actually, we feel that some bad guys are also here. But also, so that's why we need to be so like, transparent with each other. And what a very important thing is that we, uh, we started to trust each other like uh, more than before the work. Because now we can see that like this person doing something important for the country. So and I'm also doing something important so we can do together some uh, projects and uh, we can solve some problems. Do you think um, uh, this war will accelerate uh, the, um, the transition of your country? Uh, you know, like uh, now almost everything can be done very fast. You can, you can implement new law very fast and it's creating this kind of, uh, of, of high speed ways for high transformation with a society who is following the political power. Yes, exactly. So, as I mentioned already, we don't have as a choice. We will like be, we'll develop uh, ourselves inside of the country. It means our country will be in another country, like in a couple of years, especially after the war. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, uh, the way I see it as a foreigner yeah. is, is totally different from what you what you experience uh, with Crimea. He may no fight, no gun, almost nothing yeah. happened. Yeah. And 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 it's due to the political power. And the political power now yeah. is using that to transform the society. Yes. Uh, we are speaking about transparency in pol in politics. Uh, open data, for example, is very important. Uh, yeah. It's creating transparency. Uh, and and I know that uh, we are creating that. Uh, uh, do do you feel it? You in in your in your daily in your daily business life, in your meetings. Uh, Definitely, like of course, uh, like developing the country depends on the political as well. So if we have leader in our country, and so in the first days of the war, so all Ukrainians they like look at our president and were listening. So what what he say, uh, and uh, uh, he says, okay, I stay here. We fight until the end. And so far, all Ukrainians it was a signal. Okay, this is my this is my guy, right? So we, because we feel the same. Yeah. So and uh, all this uh, uh, processes of digitalization, transformation, they definitely change our life and they definitely change the like old fashioned uh, uh, corrupted system in Ukraine. So we, we, I hope we never uh, get back again to this 
or, or an old style in a business, uh, doing business. So now it's everything simple. Yeah. What are your main project for the moment? So uh, we actually we managed to create a product during the war. So we created Cyber Ranch. Uh, it's a product of uh, developing uh, cybersecurity, like educate cyber sec- uh, those, uh, cybersecurity education for all employees in your company. Mm-hmm. So and we we did it like uh, based on our experience during the war. For us, like so very, before the war, I was just doing business. You know, now I'm doing business. I'm doing volunteers. I create a product. I'm uh, doing podcast. Uh, <laughs> so it's like warm. Thanks so much. Podcast is a serial at the top. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, you told me about some Akato also you're developing now. Yeah. So um, because when we collected this around 1,000 people, uh, cyber volunteers starting from the beginning of the work, uh, I was thinking how to keep all these people together with government in future because I don't want it to be one one time job, you know, Oof. like to help and then disappear. Oof. Oof. For, because it's a unique situation when um, uh, volunteers, cyber volunteers, came to government and then tried to help the government. So I actually uh, decided to help our government and public sector to, and private sector to create some kind of uh, platform for communication between uh, cyber security experts and private and government sector. And one part of this uh, part of this uh, platform is uh, hackathons because all our, our life is a hackathon now. So we, we all the time we pro- like provide some something new. We do something new uh, for uh, like because we have a lot of requests from the uh, from our military guys. They ask it, us to do all the time, like some uh, to solve the problem, to find to to find some solutions and so on. So we created military defense hackathon together with uh, Minister of Defense, National Security and Defense Council, and the general staff. And uh, we were main technological partner of this event. It was one day before event. Uh, actually, huge missile attacks was on Kiev, mm-hmm. and we didn't have water, electricity, internet, like nothing. So we provided. We, we like we took some backup internet, backup electricity, and made our hackathon in underground metropolitan station. It was three days, 500 people. They were solving some problems for our military guys, and this hackathon. So I think that it will be like time to time. We will we'll need to do this hackathon all the time. And NATO, by the way, they ask it after this hackathon. NATO ask it us to make it challenges for the NATO hackathon oh, in, in, in Poland. So we're going to Poland now to to make these challenges because our challenges they are from the front line of the yeah. war. Those so they're, they're very real, you know, because it's a request of the military. They want to solve this problem, and we like make this problem. Like we, we, we put this problem to on the let's say on the paper. And, and the Akaton are, are only uh, um, uh, focused on cybersecurity, or they are also on something more large? It was yeah. technology. It was uh, uh, it, it was military and tech hackathon, let's say. Part it was cybersecurity, part it was psyops, like uh, anti-propaganda mm-hmm. operations. It was like more than forty teams, like five hundred people. Uh, we also had some exhibitions of Ukrainian drones and so. on. And so, like for first, uh, like high level representatives of government, military came, and it was in metropolitan. You know, like wagons, like very uh, going all the time. It was. Um, do you think we can we can organize together a hackathon for the mining? How to use technology on drones uh, to detect uh, mine under the ground? Yeah. Which technology uh, and so on? I mean, I mean, uh, it is <laughs> with pleasure. Because it's 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 a main problematic. I was uh, I was in the south uh, in Kherson a couple of uh, couple of days ago, and uh, when you see the the former front line uh, between the uh, uh, Ukrainian and and Russian, uh, they were they were fighting for this position for for months, and now it's a no man's land. But it's a no man's land with a lot of dangerous things on the right and left. So the population who need to come back now yes. need absolutely to be uh, to be safe. And to be safe, we need to be able to find a solution uh, to, to demand uh, or to clean, to clear the lands uh, as fast as possible. 
And that's, that's a mix between security and, and, and technology using picture or and AI and, and that can be the subject of a If you have, if you have ideas, I'm more than happy about it because it's my hot topic of the moment. For yeah, yeah, absolutely. So hackathons, it's just, it's not for fun, actually. They, uh, they, 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 it's for solving some problems, like, and uh, it's great to bring like, different people. So I was so excited when I saw like different teams, they share some experience. They explain how they did it. So how what, so they suggest something to, to each other. So it's great. Hackathons like one, two, three days. And we did it nonstop, like day, day nine, day. Mm -hmm. People can spend, they, they like eat some uh, pizza, the, what, whatever. So <laughs> they just were so involved, they saw so in the process. And we were blessed when like our military say that, okay, this is exactly what we need after the hackathon. This is a do this solution. Cool. Another solution helps our guys to be in the work. Uh, do you have, uh, do you have children? Yes, I have two daughters. Two daughters? Yeah. They are abroad, uh, I have the student. And yeah. Uh, How do they live uh, the fact that the daddy is, uh, is uh, in Kiev? Uh, 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 what's the relation of a family uh, with, unfortunately now, a typical Ukrainian family, a part of the family staying in Ukraine, a part who is abroad? Uh, um, yeah, my daughters, they live in Germany a couple of years already with my ex-wife, so they, they live in Germany for, for them, for them it's, uh, so they like Germany a lot, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about it. We always spent a lot of time during the, all, uh, so we used to spend a lot of time previously, uh, every vacation or every uh, holidays, we always together, and uh, like, make some travel and so on, but now it's not, uh, like, for Ukrainians, you cannot go for traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm visiting some conferences uh, sometime, and I try to see my daughters uh, at least for like, like part of the day, to, like to see them and so on. They're scary about they they afraid um, because when we are talking on phone, mm -hmm. like you can see some sirens and some explosions. So, okay, like they cry and even. Um, but are they are they? Uh... How are they feeling the, the future of the country? Do, do, they, do you feel uh, uh, that they are, they are matching with you about the future of the country, okay. even if yeah. they are not yeah. inside the country? Yeah, I, oh, like my daughters, and like, they, they can live everywhere, but they will always feel uh, like, like Ukrainians, because it's Ukrainian spirit, Ukrainian rule. And it's, it's like a very important part, and they always want to... I, I explain to them, okay, you can be a part of the world, you can live whenever you want. They know like five languages. They can like fly, like live, Ooh. or do. That. But they always need to come someday, one day, like to Ukraine, to like charge the energy, you know, the, because it's a root, so, like family here, you know, grandparents here. So it's um, um, uh, they want to come so much. Like you know, Papa, maybe we can come to Ukraine. I said, well, I don't know. No problem. No, it's not not a good uh, time to come. But of course. Um, after the war, uh, we'll spend a lot of time here in Crimea, probably. Like, why are you expecting the reaction of the world like that? Yeah. So much, uh, so much help, so much uh, uh, passion for 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 Ukraine all over Europe, all over the world. Well, it's a tricky question, you know. Yes, yeah. I know. Yeah. After I it's hope easier to Robert to tell that before. Yeah, I hope it's a little bit two three weeks, mm -hmm. uh, but no. Uh, probably will uh, the war, the, this, I don't know, the worst part of the war will uh, be ending this year, I hope. But we'll see. We are like, we are actually mental, like our mentality is ready to fight even like a couple of years so, because we don't have a other choice. We, otherwise, we'll become a slave of Russia. So, of course, we'll fight, we'll fight, fight, fight. And then, uh, our children will, will appreciate it for sure. Like after after we win, because we finally will break this like crazy relations with our brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, as the time is flying, and, and if if I had to to give you the last words, what would you tell? Anna, I would. Uh, I really think that we we it's not possible to win the war. Be a part. So we need to, we, now we feel support of all like West, Western countries, and for us it's very important. And I hope this Western countries will support us even more, in order to be uh, like uh, being faster, and less our like soldiers will die so fast. It's very important, and uh, 
we are a part of this Western world already. And I, oh, I hope uh, all this population of the Western world will understand it soon, maybe already understood, and uh, let's be together. Only together we can win this war. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Zapirio, to see you. Thank you, John. <laughs>